Hey there, Alistair here, back in the workshop. I am feeling quite, I don't know what the word would be, grateful, excited, I don't know, quite a few different things going on in my head at the moment. But uh, I come home from work today and my wife gave me a box that had arrived. And uh, here we go. I don't know if you recognize that logo on there. Anyway open it up and have a look so she's uh yeah she she's been a bit sneaky and uh she saw on one of my videos where i had i had this cardboard cutout <laughs> of a, a woodlaw knife and uh so my birthday's coming up so she figured that she would get me something nice and she has got something got me something really nice and there we go. An actual Ray Mears bushcraft knife. So I'm like blown away really that I've actually got got it in my hands, which is it's like a I don't know, it's hard to explain. I'm a bit of a sadder when it comes to knives and this is, you know, next best thing to the original Allen Wood knife. So let's have a look at it. Sheath's really nice, really nice work gone into that. Good stitching, right. edges finished really well. Fantastic colour on the on the sheath. And a nice tight fit. And here's the blade. So here we go. There it is. Ray Mears bushcraft knife. made by Ember Leaf Workshop. Is that workshops? Workshops, sorry, Ember Leaf Workshops. And uh, it's really, really well made. And it's got a real nice feel to it. And um, O1 tool, steel blade, Scandi grind. I think it's black my carter and uh they're either stainless corby bolts or stainless pins lanyard tube tapered tang which is nice and overall excellent workmanship which you'd expect yeah. i'm just amazed that i've actually got one in my hands so I want to say thank you to my wife Julie again for sneaking around and managing to get hold of one. Don't know how she did it, but she did. And um, I'm just really pleased. It's not going to get used. It's going to stay in the box and uh, just look after it. And when I die, someone else can own it. So I've um, I've already sprayed it up with some of this because it's O1 tool steel. It's uh, obviously you've got to be careful of corrosion and stuff like that. So I, I, I like to use this stuff, Ballistol, which is a it's a universal oil. I think it's German and uh, you can use it on metal, leather, plastic, wood, formica and fiberglass. It says it's a lubricant, it's a cleaner, rust inhibitor, uh, biodegradable, non-sticky, not harmful to skin, and dermo, dermo, dermatology, uh, how do you say that? Dermatological, dermo, derma, that doesn't look right the way it's spelled to me, but uh, dermatological, dermatologically tested. Anyway, it's good, it's how you can spray it on your skin and apparently... Um, so yeah, I've given it a I've given it a coat of this already, and uh, this protects against rust. So I'll put some more on there. Spine as well, and that can go back in its sheath, back in the box, and I'm going to look after it. But there we have Ray Mears bushcraft knife in my workshop fantastic
So anyway, back to reality. All right, Chelsea, I don't, I don't need my cardboard cut out anymore. Got the real thing virtually. So anyway, what I've been up to, I've been actually pretty busy. Um, been lots of, lots of handle sanding and shaping today. So the workshop's covered in dust, I'm covered in dust. And uh, what have we got? Let's move, uh, move Mr. Mr. Mears's knife, don't want to get that damaged. So we've got uh, bushwood, curved back in um, some camo G10. I'm working on this and he had a rough rough sand on the grinder still needs to be all hand sanded and rounded off but uh, that's gonna be a nice one Scandi grind on that one 3.2 AEBL stainless so that will come out as a, a real good all-weather all-purpose knife um, something that you can use if you're doing a lot of fishing or whatever with the G10 handle um, you haven't got to worry that the wood's going to get damaged. Although the stabilised woods are good, you don't really want to soak a wood handle if you can help it. Um, so with G10, you get that added sort of usability when you're um, in wet conditions or you know, other damp environments or whatever. G10, very good, especially coupled with the uh, AEBL stainless blade. And I've got a couple of uh, dingoes that I'm working on as well. These um, these are nice. The dingo is actually very popular at the moment because slightly smaller than the bushwood. But when you compare it to that's the bushwood curve back. But when you compare it to that, it's a little bit. It's a lot smaller, slimmer in design. Blaze profile is a lot slimmer. It's more of a, like the old US kind of, well, it's not it's US, but a bird and trout knife, as they call it. Um, so it's a slimmer profile with a sabre grind. It's a great all-round knife, good for fishing and all your bait prep and all that. And also going camping, you can also use it to prep your food, chop your bait and sandwich in half. So works pretty good. Good all round knife. So that one there. Um, the, the bevel there is A45 Trizac finish on there. The flats, 600 grit on the flats. So you see I've uh, finished, the, finished the spine to 3000 grit, the spine and the tang. All nice and finished off, no grind marks. No gouges. It's one thing I'm really particular about is not leaving any uh, any grinder marks or gouges in the spine and uh, the, the handle area. It's one of the things that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to, to, to get them all out. But I'm not happy unless I get them all out. And uh, sometimes you sometimes you, you, you're sanding and you're up to your three thousand grit and you're looking into there and you can see like a slight little mark, and uh, you got to go back, go back down to like three twenty, four hundred, give it another rub, and then work your way back up the grits to get that mirror finish back on there again. But it's it's one of those things that I kind of well, I don't know whether you'd say you pride yourself in, but making the the knife finished off. Nicely, all, all the edges, everything finished off nice, and like the mosaic pins got nice polish to them. Uh, can't sink the lanyard tube hole. So that's that one. I think that's Mally Burl, stabilized Mally Burl, which has got a really nice, nice grain to it. And the other one, it's another dingo. This is for Rob. And his partner, sorry, I can't, I forgot, I can't, I'm not 100% sure on what his partner's name is, but uh, he wanted one for his partner because I think they both go fishing or whatever. So that's his one, and this is his partner's. So, same again, same dingo, blade, the same, same profile, same grind. This one's got some olive wood on there, 
if you wanted just the plain simple simple wood uh, brass my little brass mosaic pins on there and again let me stand up the spiner the spine and the tang all nicely polished up to 3000 3000 grit you can see there um, they're not sharpened yet so uh, they haven't had their edge put on being it's a saber grind that's the last thing you do is uh, grind the bevel grind the edge on there on that bevel there and give it a strop up on the stropping board and leather work and they're good to go got quite a few on the go actually i'll oh, just actually one thing we've got this one here this is one of the bilby models that i do um this one is underway so it's not actually this is an xl i forgot yeah it's an xl so that's the that's the standard size so if i put them like that you can see the difference in size is probably like uh, 30 mil longer um, slightly longer blade there probably 10 15 millimeters longer blade uh, and the handle is again probably 15 20 millimeters longer so the standard one and that's uh, this is the xl so a little bit bigger on the handle there you can see my hand fits that pretty good so i've got the saber grind on that i normally do a uh, scanny grinds on, on most of these but i thought i'd give it a go with the uh, saber grind on there something a little bit different so i'm still yet to decide what hand material i'm going to use on that but, uh, it should be good when it's all finished and completed up um i think that's uh, about it so i'm gonna go and put my ray mirrors knife away somewhere nice and safe nice and nice and find a nice dry spot for it and uh that's gonna be looked after and uh i'm still i still can't believe i've got one i'm, I'm so so uh, so lucky i've got dust on the box now oh, never mind so yeah that's that's that ray Mears bushcraft knife in my possession fantastic anyway thank you very much for watching and uh like and subscribe and uh i'll see you on the next video stay safe cheers see ya